In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with your sleeve using double pointed needles, abbreviated DPNs in the pattern. The first step is to transfer these sleeve stitches from the scrap yarn onto three DPNs. Here's my tip on how to know how many stitches to put on each. The most amount should go on your first needle and the least amount should go on your last with the second one having a number in between the two. This will make a bit more sense later, I promise. Um, so let me show you how I do it for this sample. So in my case, I have 40 stitches here on scrap yarn. So for my first one, I'm going to transfer 16 stitches onto this first double pointed needle. And to do the transfer, I just stick my double pointed needle into the stitch and you could do a couple stitches at a time, but let's say, let's do, I'll do three stitches. And then just to show you, then I take my fingers in my left hand and I just start pulling it out like this. So that's three, four, five, six, pull a little bit more out. Okay, so I have 16 stitches on this first double pointed. Then I'm gonna take a second double pointed and I'm going to transfer 14 stitches. I'm just gonna move my sweater. Okay, so now I have 14 on the second double pointed. And then on the last one, I have 10 remaining stitches. So I'm gonna transfer these 10 onto my third double pointed. And sometimes that very last stitch that you transfer, it kind of gets a bit hidden. So what you do is you just make sure to take your scrap yarn and pull it up. And then you can see more clearly that stitch. So just stick it right in there. All right, so let me get my sweater flat again so you can better see. Okay, so I have 16 on the first, 14 on the second, and 10 on the third. So every size is going to be different in terms of the number of stitches that you put on the double pointed. But if in general you, you follow the rule that the most amount go on this first, the least amount go on the third, and a number in between, goes up here. It doesn't have to be exact. These are just some um, some guidance. And as I said, it'll make sense in just a little bit as to why I'm recommending that. So the next instruction says to join yarn at underarm and pick up and knit a certain number of left side underarm stitches. So here's our underarm. 
And for my size, it says to pick up the left side two stitches. So let me grab a fourth DPN here. And so you could tell your underarm cast on stitches because they have these little bars underneath here. The, fr the first one you cast on always is a little bit more subtle than the other ones, but you can identify them this way. So the, the left side are these two here. So I'm gonna insert my fourth DPN into this stitch just like this. And there's lots of different ways that you might see online for how people um, pick up these underarm stitches. This is just how I do it. So I'm gonna insert my fourth DPN right there. And then I'm going to take my yarn. Let me bring my yarn onto this side. And leaving a nice long tail, especially at the underarm, I like to leave a really long tail because it's gonna come in handy as you're weaving in ends at the, at the end. So I'd say at least 12 inches long of a tail. I'm gonna drape it over this DPN and then I'm going to pull the loop through. So in essence, I've just picked up that, I picked up that underarm stitch and now I'm knitting it. There we go. And so then I'm going to pick up this second of the underarm stitches, going just like that. And then knit. Okay, so we've picked up and knit our left side underarm stitches. The next instruction says to pick up and knit one stitch to the left of the underarm. So we wanna pick up somewhere in the area between this stitch and this stitch, somewhere around here. Now the trick with this is you really just wanna pick up in an area that is not gonna create a big hole. So for example, if I were to pick up the stitch here, see how you can even tell just by me putting the needle in that there is a big gap that would form right here. So I don't wanna go right in the edge there. I actually think that a, a, a good spot to pick up in would be probably right around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up both sides of this stitch right here and knit it. And then I always take a look to see how I like it because you could always undo it. Okay, that looks, that looks good to me. Now it says to knit across all the stitches on the needles. So I will first knit across this first double pointed. Okay, once I've knit across that first double pointed, and I have all the stitches on this DPN, and this becomes my free needle that I wind up using to knit across the next double pointed. So turn your work so you can better get to the next double pointed. So again, with your newly freed double pointed, insert it into this DPN. And your working yarn is still attached to the other DPN. You just go ahead and pick it up and start knitting across this DPN. Just like the last DPN, once you've knit the last stitch off of that one, you have all your stitches on this needle. This becomes your free DPN. Twist your work again here. I always, if, you're, if your tail that you had left at the beginning because it's long kind of gets in the way, just stick that right on the inside there. 
Okay, so we have the working yarn that's coming from this DPN. Here are these stitches on this last DPN. I'm going to take my free one, insert it into the first stitch, then take my working yarn and start knitting across this one. Okay, so now we have knit all of our stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my work again so we can see this properly. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna take my free DPN and I'm gonna put it aside right now. So now the instructions say to pick up and knit one stitch to the right of the underarm. So remember how on this side, we picked up our underarm stitches and then we, we picked up one right on the side. We're gonna do the same over here. So in this corner, I'm gonna go ahead and still now using my third double pointed with the yarn still attached to it, I'm gonna insert it somewhere right around this area. So again, I don't wanna go right into the edge cause that would create a visible hole. So I'm gonna go one stitch in. And there's no rule as to where you put that in. So just find a spot that you think um, will, will be the most appealing visually, that it won't have a hole. So I'm gonna go, let's see, I'm gonna go right in here. Pick up both of those loops of that stitch and knit it. And that just helps to bridge the gap between the sleeve stitches that had been on scrap yarn and the underarm and makes the, um, the join area not as loose. Okay, then the instructions say to pick up the right side two underarm cast on stitches. So here, this as I said, the first underarm stitch was a little tricky to, to see. And as you can see, sometimes it just has a, a big loop, but this is where you can go ahead and pick up kind of right under that and that will close up that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up right there. And then I'm gonna pick up right in here. This is the last one. Okay, so we have now finished that first row and have all of the stitches on the needles, but we have one more important step to do. So it says that once you pick up those right side underarm cast on stitches, which in my case were the two, it then says to place marker for beginning of round. So let me get a marker and I put it right here on the right needle. Now, as you can imagine, if we were to just leave it that way and I pick up my free double pointed and I start knitting around, this marker is gonna just go flying off the needle. So we need to secure it, which just means that before I start working with the free double pointed again, I'm going to knit, oops, I'm going to knit a few stitches. So still working on this third double pointed, I'm going to insert my needle and it might feel a little bit tight and that's okay. I'm gonna insert my needle into that first stitch. That might feel a little loose. You can take your tail and tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get three stitches on that needle. And that's all that I'll do. And now, the marker is secure because there's stitches on either side. So that's why I had said to have more stitches on the first needle and less on the third needle, because at this stage, I wind up transferring some of these stitches over just to keep that marker secure. So now you have approximately the same amount of stitches on all of the needles. So then the next step of the pattern says that you're just gonna knit eight rounds. So your marker is always gonna be your beginning of round. So to get started, then you're gonna take your, your fourth double pointed here and you're going to knit across these stitches. Then this becomes your free needle. You go to this one. So you're just gonna keep going in that, in that same method and slipping the marker as you reach it. So one thing I just wanted to point out with this is that, 
especially on this side. See how there's, there's definitely a bit of a hole right there that is totally normal and to be expected. Um, that is why when we originally joined the yarn over here that I had you do a really long tail because at the end, we're going to weave this in and cinch it all up. So don't be concerned if you see that, it's totally normal. And I'll show you at the end how we'll um, cinch it up so you won't even see it. So that is how you work sleeves using double pointed needles.